Good morning, Peace Church, and welcome to worship. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you to check in with us this morning. You can find the link to do so on our website or our mobile app. If you're watching on YouTube, you can find that link in the description below. And if you're watching with us on Facebook, you can find that in the comment section. Well, I hope each and every one of you had a wonderful Christmas celebration. Whether it was socially distanced, whether you were able to travel, whether you with friends or family, from all of us here at Peace, we hope you had a very Merry Christmas. Just a reminder, the church office will be closed until January the 4th. If you have any questions about year-end contributions, you can email Glenna at the church office and she'll be able to take care of those questions for you. Now let's begin worship with the singing of our opening hymn. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, my eyes have seen your salvation. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory to your people Israel. Alleluia. Your righteousness, O God, reaches the high heavens. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My soul also, which you have redeemed. People redeemed by the Lord, let us now make confession of our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We repent of having sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have left undone those things we ought to have done. We have done those things we ought to not have done. We have not lived our lives fully in the freedom won for us by our Lord. 
We have not always shared the bounty you have given us as stewards of your creation. We sincerely repent of our sins and humbly ask your grace and forgiveness in Jesus our Savior. By the renewing work of the Holy Spirit, lead us to change what is sinful in our lives, that each day we grow in righteousness and godly living to the glory of your holy name. God has promised pardon, life, and salvation because of the atoning sacrifice of his beloved Son, who has replaced slavery to sin with a priceless inheritance of freedom and joy. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As you believe, so may it be. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Old Testament reading today comes to us from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. 
Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever and acted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Luke in chapter 2. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what had sa- I'll start that phrase over again. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service at peace this morning and our time for God's Word to be unpacked for you in hopefully a wonderful, meaningful way. Before I get started on the sermon this morning, I have just a little bit of a a good good announcement and exciting news. We have a couple of new families we've added to our membership here at Peace, and I wanted just to highlight them for a moment for you folks here on on our virtual uh, worship services who are worshiping at home. So we have Deborah Sullivan, who has joined the church, and also Sammy Roberts and his family, the Roberts family, have joined the church. Now, we're going to do a bigger celebration later on, but we wanted to go ahead and highlight them as our new members. We're going to take some time now, and we're going to dig into God's Word and find the, the blessings and the fruit and the joy that's there as we journey together. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you this morning for the gift that you gave us on Christmas by coming into this world. Lord, we ask you to be with us as we study your word today, as we enjoy the blessings of Christmas still a few days later. Help us to see you in the midst of everything and help us to be encouraged and strengthened today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Did you ever watch the TV show Fear Factor? It was a show that was intentionally putting participants into situations that would provoke fear even from some of the most strong-stomached people. 
whether it was eating something that they had no idea about, to sticking their hands in a box full of spiders or snakes, anything they could find to go to the extreme and something that the risk-taker participants might faint over. I found it interesting that all those folks went willingly, mostly, into those situations. Many of us would probably have trepidation and fear if we were placed into the same challenge. This year has been a fear factor of one level or another from beginning to end. It has been marked with different types of challenges that each of us have had to navigate. Thankfully, we're almost to the end of the year, to the end of the challenges, well, at least for this go-round. This past month during Advent, we looked at some of the fears that we face that some of the Bible characters faced during their time. These were some of the negative fears, the fears that we need to be careful for, the fears that we need to put faith over the fear that we need to navigate around. However, this weekend, I'm going to talk about fear again. This time, there's going to be a little different title to the fear. Healthy fear. This is going to be the kind of fear that is good to have in your life. Kids, it's time for you to have a little bit of church time right now. I need your help from where you're sitting here at church or in your house. Let's play a game together. Can you help me figure out what is good fear versus what's bad fear? What are the things we should be afraid of versus the things that we don't need to be afraid of? Everyone else out there, can you help join in too? Now adults, if you can help me by doing thumbs up or thumbs down, that would be great. Here's our first thing, the dark. Is it good or bad? Thumbs up or thumbs down? You got it right. Thumbs down. It's not a good fear to have. We don't need to be scared of the dark. Number two, the stove. Is that a good fear or a bad fear? You're right, it's a good fear. We don't want to touch the stove and burn our hand. The third one, snakes. Is it a good fear or a bad fear? It's a good fear. We don't want to be touching snakes and get hurt. Number four, monsters. Is that a good fear or a bad fear? Yep, they really don't live under the bed and crawl out or live in the closet. If you've seen Monster Zinks, it helps us all explain all of that. Number five, riding a bike. Is that a good fear, something to be worried about, or is that not a fear that we need to have, a bad fear? Well, you're right. It's not a good fear. It's a bad fear. There's no need to be scared of riding a bike. Even if we fall off, it won't hurt that bad. I promise, I've done it a few times myself. And the final thing, strangers. Is that a good fear or a bad fear? You're right, that is a good fear. We shouldn't go up to strangers or we shouldn't listen when they try to talk to us if we're walking around or riding our bikes. We need to have a healthy fear of them. Now, maybe something you guys can talk about later today at home are the things that are really important to be careful for. Maybe those healthy kind of fears, the good fears. As we continue to think about the role that fear plays in our lives, I'd like to consider the relationship that fear has with respect. The dictionary talks about fear as an unpleasant emotion stemming from something that is dangerous or a threat. On the opposite side of the coin there, or spectrum, is respect, 
which is an admiration of something caused by their abilities, their qualities. I believe these two words have a similar impact depending on the perspective that you take. The perspective of fear comes from a place of hurt, pain, and worry, while the perspective of respect comes from a healthy view of the capabilities of other people and things. Think back to our experiment, our game of good versus bad fear. Is a stove something to be feared or respected? As adults, we respect the power of the heat that, and the power that it provides. So for the most part, we're not going to touch it or even the pans that we're using to cook because we don't want to get burned. Maybe we've been burned in the past. Sometimes things that begin as a deep fear for us turn into a deep respect. While I was growing up, I had a deep fear of heights. I wasn't able to climb the ladder more than one or two rungs. I wasn't able to really look out of tall skyscraper building windows or enjoy many of the things that other people might take for granted. This fear literally came to its height as I went up a cable car in New Mexico on a family move. My parents thought it would be cool to go up this mountain. Everyone else was game. I, however, was plastered in the middle, trying to hold on for dear life as we kept going up and up the mountain. When I got out, I had to go to the bathroom for quite some time because I was sick. If we fast forward to adult life, I'm no longer fearful of heights. Well, there is still a little bit of fear there, but I believe I have a much better respect today where I'm cautious but willing to venture up the ladder or go up a mountain or look out a window I would tend to think that each of us can probably relate to the change over the years in one aspect or another of your life. What makes the difference? The change from fear to respect. How do we start to move past our deepest fears that we may experience into the healthy fear and respect that God wants us to have? The first step in the process is to evaluate what our unhealthy or bad fears are. To understand why they have such a hold and a grip on us. Many times, we take a little bit of time the next few days to reflect and review on the past year, or maybe a little bit longer. I'd like for you to take a couple moments and think about the fears that have been prevalent for you this year. For some of you, maybe it's a fear of COVID and a fear of death. For others, it may be the fear of isolation and loneliness which has been a heavy constant as we've moved throughout the seasons this year. Maybe it is a fear of rejection from your family or your friends or your coworkers. Maybe it's a fear of the future, of the unknown, a fear of, of what might happen next year, a fear of how do I start re-entry back into life Again, I believe as we look at these fears, we can see that they each start off as we look into an aspect 
of our life through our own eyes. We try to manage and control whatever the situation or condition might be. So let's turn our focus to our our lesson for today, Psalm 111. Here, we're also told to have fear. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. The heart of this instruction points us directly to faith. It points us directly to God. It is something that is a very common encouragement, especially in the book of Proverbs. It shows up both in chapter 1 and chapter 2, and then throughout the rest of the book. I look at fear in this verse in the context of both the fear and the respect we had talked about earlier. In the terms of admiration, we truly have a healthy fear and awe of God and His wisdom and power. When we begin here in a place of faith, we come to learn at the foot of the one who created the universe. We see the actions that God has done throughout history to benefit his people, to provide them with blessing and grace. It's interesting how in verse 2, the psalm writer points out, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all those who delight in him. We're still studying those works of the Lord today. We're still experiencing the benefits of them in our lifetime. It is as we study these works, these words, that we begin to gain wisdom. We begin to have a bit of understanding of the heart and mind of God as we learn, journey, and grow in our faith. The blessing about gaining this wisdom is that as we put it into practice, the psalm tells us that we will have good understanding. So what does that mean for us today? I believe it means that as we look at some of the same challenges and fears, that we'll approach them in a different manner. That we will look with God's wisdom into the times that could bring hurt, or pain. We will see the hand of God working even through the pain. We will gain a healthy fear truly of God. And then this becomes our compass to help guide us through life. As we turn into the gospel reading for today, where we encounter two important figures in this just after Christmas story, Simeon and Anna. They were both given the promise that they would have the ability to see Jesus during their lifetime. Now as we look to them, they are both advanced in age. They have been waiting for quite some time. However, what was something that was extremely strong in them? The fear of the Lord. They truly had the wisdom and the understanding that the psalm writer is talking about to fill them up with the hope, even in the years of dismay and maybe even some darkness. Let me ask you a question. How would you Or how have you felt if you were given a generational promise like Simeon and Anna? Something that you know and believe will be fulfilled. But it may take quite some time. Maybe be even beyond your lifetime. How does that influence your fear factor versus the healthy fear of the Lord, yielding wisdom and understanding? 
The biggest generational promise that each of us has is Jesus' promise that he's coming back, that he will come in all of his glory as the king of the universe to inaugurate fully the new life, the new life renewed and restored in heaven. I hope that those promises and blessings and even the fears that might cause us to worry lead us back today and every day to the healthy fear. I hope they lead us back, especially in this season, to study the birth of the baby in the manger, the place where God works in a mighty way as he sends down redemption for the entire world and all times. As those who have a healthy fear and a desire to gain wisdom and understanding, we need to be diving into the Word so that we can gain the study of the works and the words of God. Now, one of the important phrases in the gospel lesson today is the last verse. And what it says is, And the child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here we see a picture of Jesus, who is truly God and man, truly. Even as a child, Jesus is connected with the fear of the Lord and the wisdom straight from the source. The last part of the verse is, I believe, guiding for us as we travel through the journey of faith. The favor of God was upon him. I hope and pray that you see and experience God's favor in your life every day, that you see the hand of God working in the midst of the scenes and the seasons that you find yourself in. We're getting ready to start a new year in just a few short days. It will be a new season in life for some of you. For others, it may be a continuation of the current season. I want you to see this new year even more so than the past years, as a new start. Our prayers are that God is going to work mightily to help reduce the challenges that we face in 2020. But thinking about a new start, I want you to take some time and think about a few next steps. The first one is, begin or continue to fear the Lord. What do I mean by that? Be in the Word daily. Use your Bible app on your phone to give you a reminder. Join a study with a group so that you have accountability, so that you're in the Word every day. The second step is pray that God will continue to fill you up with wisdom and understanding. And finally, give up some of the unhealthy fear that may be lurking from this past year. Amen. And may the peace of God guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus as we look forward to the new year, the new blessings that God will bring in 2021. Amen. Let us confess our faith together now, based on John 1 and 3, 16. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, 
and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and though the word was made through him, the word did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us join together now in the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one thing, earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.